Um, welcome everyone to the uh, Monday, October 4th Committee of the Whole Community Development meeting. Um, our calling to order, our, our second uh, item would be to approve the agenda. Um, uh, Wendy, did you want to make a quick comment? Yes, thank you for the chair. I, in preparing the agenda, included the minutes from the August CDC meeting instead of the September CDC meeting. So when we have a good internet connection, maybe tomorrow I will make sure those are posted. The September minutes are posted to the website. They're right now available in the council package on our website. Um, but I printed out copies of the September minutes for the committee here tonight. <coughs> Thank you. Um, should is there just for transparency? Should we delay approving those until? Through the chair, they were approved at the. They were council approved meeting. at the council. So okay, okay. So we're good to go then. They've already been out there. All right. So noting the change of August to September minutes. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Um, so I need a mover and a seconder for the approval of the agenda. So Seconds Second. are Cameron, Mr. Mayor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. So number three would be the disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Does anyone have any disclosures tonight? Hearing none. Moving on to those minutes, which would be are there, uh, does anyone have any business arising? Uh, from those minutes, I know you've had a short period of time to review. Uh, so, so just for the record, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. So, just for the record, uh, we did at that meeting on page five uh, talk about the um, short regulating or not regulating or how to regulate uh, short-term accommodations. And uh, so, I understand from discussion that we'll be dealing with that specific issue. Uh, at a later meeting, is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe that uh, we've put it on the November agenda uh, due to the agenda on this one being a little, extreme. A little extreme, extreme and, and, and a little more, uh, we just need time sensitive. Good, yeah, thank you very much. Anything else? That's it. Anyone else? No. Okay. Okay. Good? Sorry, yep. to the chair, I guess. We just had an update on num number four it was brought up that um, the cleanup uh, of the proposed uh, site for two pen farms on Highway 2. We have an estimate. I see that we started doing some work right at the very bottom, Mr. Chair, on page one. Oh, page one, sorry. Oh, sorry. four. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so, uh, through the chair, I guess, to the CAO, do we have any update there? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any, any current update. We, we have been in contact with the, uh, with the owner. So, through so, the chair, it has, yeah. I've seen some improvement. So, so just noting that there yeah. is some. Mr. Mayor? No, I was just going to say that the junk that was around the outside of the building has been removed. The only thing they didn't do is turn the sign up, right side up again. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't do that, but it, it is it is uh, quite a bit better than it was when this meeting was held. Uh, anything further? Uh, just one thing. Yes. Along that same line, because yes. they did commit to a certain timeline uh, to getting their site and control agreement in place. So through the chair to to the CD so the, to the coordinator, have we had any further contact with them with regard to their site plan control agreement or their application for a building permit? Yeah. Through the chair, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, was in contact with um, an agent for the owners uh, last week. They've submitted some additional items. Um, not all of the application requirements have been met yet. I offered to put the zoning bylaw amendment on tonight's agenda, but I don't yet have a signed copy of the application. And I think it's best to wait until we've got that at least first. And then um, it, it could come towards a committee with the understanding that a servicing plan would follow before council's approval, or we would work something out. I know they're working really hard to get a complete application together. And um, I know the committee is anxiously awaiting um, the, the application. So I'm gonna have it on the agenda as, as soon as I can. 
So through the chair, yes, uh, through the chair, if I may, do they have do they have a consulting firm or a planning firm that they're working with? Um, yes, they have um, a, a few actually. They've um, Decentra is the um, company I've worked with on most of the items, but they've contracted um, other agencies to kind of piece out part of the application requirements. So we've been working with a different engineering firm and a different planner. And so different, um, I guess, different agencies are contributing, but Decentra, I think it's called, has been the um, applicant that the owners have been, or the agent that the owners have been most working with. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Anyone else before we move on? Good. Um, take one second. I didn't uh, recognize uh, Tracy Zander, who is uh, with us on Zoom. I, I forgot to do that. So uh, welcome, Tracy. Um, I'll turn in when it's time. Thanks. We are on uh, five, right? Or no? Yep. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no delegations and presentations tonight. So we are on 6A1, which would be the application for severance on Walker Street. Wendy, can you give us a little background? Thank you. Yes, to the chair. We have an application for a severance on Walker Street. Um, this is a bit of a unique situation. I'm going to do my best to explain this. There is one lot with two semi detached buildings on it right now. So that's four units altogether. Um, each, each building has, has two units of semi-detached and the um, application proposes to sever the lot so that um, just one severance creating one new lot and each lot will have one building with two units on it and each building has its own uh, uh, water and sewer connection not necessarily each unit has one connection to the one semi-detached and another connection to the other semi-detached building um, so uh, if the severance is granted, we'll now have two lots and each one will have its own two unit semi detached building on I tried to make that really clear in the in the report, hopefully it, it came through. Um, but I mean, other than that, like it, it complies with the, um, the official plan and the zoning bylaw each lot is of the appropriate size and has the appropriate frontage. Um, so I, I don't have any, any concerns there. <coughs> um, Councilor Cameron. Your first uh, yes, I'm. As you say, this is unique. Um, I've, I've got a couple of questions. On page 10, uh, it shows the map and it shows yellow, which is to be severed. Now I understand there's two units on that piece of property. And then the blue, which is to be retained, there's also two units on that property. So what is the severance going to do? Uh, through the chair. So right now, the yellow and the blue is all one lot. So there's two buildings, two semi-detached buildings. Yes, I, yes, yeah. Okay. So the severance is going to, if you look at the next um, page, so page 11, you'll see where the severance is. It'll Each lot is going to have its own semi-detached building on it. Or duplex on it. It calls it a duplex in this. It's actually a semi-detached. Yeah, duplex okay. to be divided. Um, Horizontally, okay. semi detached is divided. Okay, now I just want to draw your attention to the little pie shaped piece on the left hand side of the yellow lot. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a property line that runs down there? Because it seems to be for the other, but I could be mistaken. So I'm I'm just curious about that little pie shaped lot that's there. And it appears there's a building or something on it, or maybe not. Yeah, if I understand correctly, Councillor Cameron, this is um, a building. It, it does look like it is a building, but it's it's not on the subject land. It's it then why is it then why is it outlined in yellow? It appears to me that it, it's a, it, it's outlined in yellow, and if it wasn't on the lot, then the yellow should be. Coming down where the the angle line is. Yeah, there you go. So is this the is this the property line or 
That's what I'm concerned about. Looks like it did something. If I, Councilor Chair, are you, um, Councilor Cameron, are you on page 11 looking no, at I'm the on page, page I'm, 10. On, I'm on page 10. Page 10. It's, it's also shown on page 11 as well, where it's on the left hand side. There's a little yellow uh, triangle uh, there. And and I can it, it appears to be there's a pie shaped um, piece and and the, well actually to be quite truthful Wendy on page eleven it's a little more clear than it is on page ten also clear and I do think that I may be mistaken because I can see the uh, I can see the property line pins. Yeah. On page eleven, better than I can on page ten. So, just I'm sorry to, to bother you on that one. So, um, just let's let's just forget that question. So, the question I had then is has been answered. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Councillor Cameron. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Councillor Delabar was next, and then Mr. Mary wanted that. Um, yes, I, I just have a little clarification. So for, we have two duplexes and we only have one, one septic or one uh, each, no? Through the chair, yeah, each building has its own water and sewer connection. That just is one building. Each unit in that building. Each unit, so there's two, there's two water yes. going in and two sewers going in. To each one, no. for the original or just the one lot. Oh, each no, no, no. each so, building no. has so, its own. Stop. <laughs> so, so, so put put you this way: there, there are two buildings on that lot right now. Right. Each building has a water and a sewer connection going to it. To each building, yes, not each, each building. Right. So there's two water and sewers. There's two. One in each building. building. But there's two homes and there are each two, building. There are two units within that building. So we should have two water and sewer to each building. So typically, as per the water meter bylaw in 2013, you typically have one service line going to a building. But it should have two service lines so, going into that building now. That, that, that would be inconsistent with the 2013 water meter bylaw. If, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I, I was just going to say that if at a later date that there was a severance of the semi detached, then an additional water and sewer service would be required. So the building's owned by the same person. <laughs> Have a hard time wrapping my head around that. If it's two owners of the same building, then you have to have two programs. It's one owner and one owner. But excuse me, point, yes. of, point of information. So through the chair of CAO, mm -hmm. so I'm going down to Walter Street, I think it's called, which is on the south side of the canal. Charlie Burrell's new four unit. We insisted on four separate soup. It's, it's, they're all joined together. Four units or three, four. Well, four. That's what I'm getting. And each one's got its own sewer and water connection, does it not? We charge them. That's the way we're supposed to be charging them is fifteen hundred dollars for water and for each water connection and fifteen hundred dollars for each sewer connection. And there's supposed to be four connections into that building, if I recall correctly. And that issue first arose down on County Road Two, where the uh, Friedman built the duplex on County Road Two. And we had a major foo for raw over that one. And he insisted that he put in two sewers and two waters to that building. Correct. So if I made it through the chair, the difference is that this building is existing at the time when the meters went in. And the, the requirement was to have one service to each building. The, so so the, the, the two that are being referenced now are new builds, and what we're trying to do is uh, be more proactive with respect to, to separate servicing 
so that it's already in place if there is a future severance and one side is not impacting the other. Yeah, yeah so I can accept the predate argument. I have no problem with the predate argument, and that's what we're dealing with here. Yes. This this predates that. Correct. Yeah, I have no yeah. problem with that. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think I just wanted to make uh, yeah. to, I, I just wanted to address Councillor Dillabaugh's point that <clears throat> you know that, that this building predates that requirement. Correct. <clears throat> My question is, how on earth did this ever happen? Because I'm looking at the two maps that we've got in front of us. <clears throat> I've got an instrument number 122024, 122024, <clears throat> which clearly crosses both those lots, or what will now be two lots. And I've another, also got instrument number 132019, which shows the part one and the part two. I just don't understand what's happened here, but I guess that's beyond us. Let's just get this severance done. <coughs> for sure that it's going to work is this does the same owner own both pieces both the severed is the same owner going to own both pieces both the severed and the retained sure i can i can only guess but i i feel like i have an educated guess here to entertain that the the applicant on behalf of the owner is their realtor so i i Feel like it's a good assumption that their intent is to sell at least one of the, the lots. Yeah. So I guess my concern is, Mr. Chair, is that if the applicant is the realtor on behalf of the owner, when these are severed, severed, they have to be severed under two different names, or they're going to immediately merge again. Through, through, the, through the chair, I agree that it, oh, it's awful when lands registered adjacent and they're under the same name and they merge and we don't get any notice, but there is also a rule where it's once a severance, always a severance. So if that, when that land is severed, even if it's under the same name, I'm not saying it can't happen accidentally, but they should not be merged if they're- Yeah, but they will. They will be merged. And then if he wants to sell them, he's gonna to have to come back to us for another severance and get them separated again. Is there a grace? Period or a waiting period? No. Would they happens? Would they merge two two adjacent properties that both have residential dwellings? As long as they've got the same name, as long as they're registered in the same name. This, I mean, I don't even think the county did. The, has the county been involved in this application? Probably wouldn't point out the fact that there has to be two separate names. But MPAC will just. And the thing is, there's no, there's no. Um, doesn't seem to be much coordination between MPAC and the and the county severance department because I know that if they're severed and they're both the same names, they'll merge automatically on legal title. And I don't know what the point of the severance would be if he's going to take title to the both of them in the same name. That's good. But maybe Tracy can help us out here. I see she's listening. I think that's accurate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was hoping you were going to give me that opportunity. <laughs> it's hard to listen and not want to jump in, um, if I may. So uh, I think it was Wendy who said that. But under the Planning Act, there's what we call once a severance, always a severance. So if you create a lot by consent under the Planning Act, it will never merge with an abutting property unless somebody files another Planning Act application to make that so. So if, if a planning act decision is granted by consent and the, you know, they follow through and register that lot, it will never merge. Even if you put them in the same name, sometimes you will see those two properties on the same deed or even with the same tax roll number. But technically, once a severance, always a severance. It will never merge with an abutting property. Having said that, I always encourage people to put lots in different <laughs> names uh, so they don't get messed up in deeds that show two lots, but yeah. Uh, planning a consent lot will not merge with an abutting property. Well, I have a real problem with that interpretation, Tracy, because I've had the bad experience. Here yeah, we've definitely dealt with it. Yep, we sure have. But it's always been been a lot, not where a farmer's field got attached to back to. Uh, something that had been severed off of, and then we end up splitting them back again. I've never seen it where uh, it's been something like this, where it's it's two homes that are being separated apart. 
if I may, I would just add, so the lot that is created by the severance can never merge. That's the Planning Act, that's law. The retained parcel or the remnant parcel that is not the one that we call the severed lot, it definitely can merge. So you could see that. Uh, I see merged parcels all the time, I'm constantly filing severance applications to separate lots that have merged. Uh, but those are, if they were created as the severed lot, they cannot merge under law. Uh, the retained lot definitely could merge with an abutting property. I, I would love <laughs> Yes. Um, Thank you, Tracy. Yes, through you, I, I and I'm just going to direct this to the CAO because he had mentioned this before. Now, am I under the understanding that when this lot is severed, and if it's sold to another individual, to another name, are we going to require another water and sewer hookup for the other building or for the for the other unit, I should say? It's a new one. Uh, not, not this time, but if it was to be uh, severed again, meaning the semi-detached portion was severed, then a second service would be required. Well, these, these, even though they're re no, I could be wrong. That's all right. That's okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, no worries. So one final question. Sure. Because the issue before the terror is the severance itself, not that detail. Right. And I apologize. That's okay. So what on on page eleven? What is the significance of the of the yellow shades? Mm -hmm. Yes. And those are the driveways. That's actually yes. That's actually a plan that I requested from the applicant. I wanted to see if each unit had its own parking, and it wasn't clear when the first sketch was provided because I could see on a Google map that there was a driveway and I didn't know if the whole driveway was going to one side or the other or if it was being split in half so I just asked for a sketch and it, it had enough additional information on it that I thought it would be of value to the committee to, to see as well. Well ultimately we're just kind of getting things sort of the way that they should be right yeah. it, it complies with with everything in our Zoning bylaws, setbacks are right, and as parking. Yeah. Okay, so um, there is a recommendation uh, that's here, and the committee recommend the council recommend in favor of severance B 113 uh, 21. Um, Connor, do you have a question? Or I just had a comment about sure. it. Um, I, I don't see an issue with the severance, but I did want to maybe use this opportunity to put the idea in people's minds. Uh, that since First Street is, is not used as a street, um, but it is still retained by the township. And looking forward to the next five, 10 years, there's two plus subdivisions. Uh, this would be a good opportunity for a sidewalk, walking path, path bike path to go in to connect uh, people commuting to the back and forth between subdivisions or from one to the pool, the rink, et cetera. Um, you know, they, there could be fencing done, uh, you know, sidewalk, but it would be a good way to do this because of course you wouldn't want a street going right into the parking lot there, but a bike path would be good. Thank you for the comments, Connor. Uh, are there any further before I look for a mover in a second? None here, none. All right, so I need a mover for the recommendation. Moved by Greg Mondler. I need a seconder. No second. Seconded by Steve Dillabaugh. Calling the question. All in favor? Yes. Yes, we're good to go. I'm getting there. I'm not used to paper. <laughs> Throw me a loop. All right. Development agreement for South Street, uh, 150 4107 Ontario Incorporated. Money a little background. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the committee might recall back at our July meeting, we reviewed an application for severance on South Street in the village of Spencerville. Um, one of the conditions that we requested was that the um, owner enter into a development agreement with the township to um, uh, ensure the recommendations on the hydrogeological study um, were registered on title of the property. Um, the counties conditionally approved this severance application on uh, Wednesday last week on September 29th. And the development agreement is as we requested one of the conditions of severance. So this agreement um, that's attached to this agenda item um, is just to fulfill that severance condition. Okay. I'm prepared to move the recommendation, Mr. Chair. A mover, do I have a seconder? Here, second it. Councilor Hunter. Um, is there any discussion to be had? Uh, I, I just have um, I just have one quick one and uh, just through the chair to the staff. On page 73, there are seven topics that I believe the counties had set forth and they all been complied with. Page what now? 73. 73. Isn't 73 Meadowlands? Seven. Oh. 73 is Meadowlands sorry. on South Street. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I thought uh, Meadowlands started on 74. Uh, sorry, I, have, I may have my numbers mixed up here. So, so it, it, if I may, through the chair, yes. uh, page 73 is, is actually Schedule D, which is the development requirement. Yes. Is for, that for, for South Street? Is, is that for South Street? South Street? Yes, I thought so. So, so have all those requirements been, been met? Is, is my... Through the chair, no, these are the, this is, I guess this is the reason for the development agreement. Those requirements were um, outlined in the, um, in the hydrogeological assessment as recommendations. Yes. So we're registering those on title so that the new owners will be Aware of those. Okay. No, they that, haven't, it hasn't been that long. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think they all say future residents. So, yeah. yes. So, that is going to be embedded in granite, more or less. Registered right to the title of the property. Very good. Yes. That's, that, thank you. That's what I yeah. wanted to know. Okay. Any apologies, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Councillor Cameron sharper than me tonight. <laughs> It's, Councilor Cameron. Uh, thank, thank you. I, I, thank you for that. Uh, did everyone hear? Is that recorded? Thank you. Mr. Okay. Woo. So so noted in the minutes. Um, uh, all right. So we do have a mover. We do have a seconder. Hearing no more discussion, then so uh, I've lost the recommendation. I'm sorry. Can you just repeat it one time for me, Wendy? Yeah. Um. That committee recommend that council adopt a bylaw to enter into a development agreement as attached with the owner of the subject plants of severance B8021. Uh, calling question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. So, so far. All right. So um uh, we'll go to six three. And uh, that was the proposed revision to plan a subdivision for Meadowlands uh, North, uh, Xander 205-78786, Ontario Incorporated. Uh, Wendy, do you want to do background? And then we'll let maybe Tracy jump in on that. Sure. sure. So <clears throat> um, most of you here on the committee were in attendance on September 16th. We held a public meeting. Um, in regard to this proposed revision to um, a, or a draft plan approval subdivision, um, we now have a final report prepared by Novatech, who's taken into consideration the comments we heard that night um, and helped us with a recommendation. And um, the applicant, Tracy Sanders, who was here tonight, um, has also prepared um, another report in response to the comments. Um, that were heard. So I know there's a lot of reading material um, there, but um, 
I, I guess in, in summary, um, staff recommend um, in favor of the revisions that were uh, proposed. We also feel like the um, conditions of draft approval remain um, in general consistent with the conditions that were issued in 2017. Um, that's not to say that the conditions may have um, some uh, some tweaks where something used to be called block A, maybe now it's called block D. I'm just, that's a random example, but um, so there might be some administrative changes, but we do recommend that the conditions that were in place in 2017 just be carried forward. Um, the counties have provided in their comments to the applicant um, just they just um, requested that the township consider um, affordable housing and the policies that we have about uh, affordable housing. Um, we talked about this a little bit at the public meeting and uh, noted that we, I mean, we are adding semis and townhomes, definitely more homes and more choices to, um, to the, the plan of subdivision. Um, and we feel like that um, contributes significantly to um, our inventory of affordable housing in the township. Thanks, uh, thanks, Wendy. Uh, Councillor Cameron, before we begin, I think I'm just going to um, uh, see if Tracy wants to address us at first, and then we'll open everything up for, for questions. So uh, did you want to go ahead and, and do that, Tracy? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the opportunity to join you virtually this evening. That's uh, very nice and accommodating. I know you're getting back to in-person meetings, so that's great. Uh, I, Wendy has indicated I did provide a summary report. I was very happy to see so many of your residents out to the public meeting. I'm really uh, respect the public process, so I was happy to see lots of people there. I hope we've been able to answer uh, most of the questions and concerns that were raised by the public in the report. Um, we do still owe the township a response to the peer review comments on the municipal uh, servicing capacity, so I had hoped to have that for you in time for this evening, but I that still needs to follow. Um, I, as Wendy said, you've got lots of reading material. I'm, I'm, I won't go over that. I'm happy to answer any questions that arise. So maybe I'll just leave it at that for the moment. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Cameron. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I have several several questions. Um, um, I guess the first question I have, and, and I think it's uh, through the chair to probably Tracy or the CIO could answer this, but. Regarding the buffer zone to the uh, to the actual south of the actual um, um, plan of lot here, um, has that uh, has that buffer zone ever been surveyed? Uh, if, if through you, Mr. Chair, um, is the council referring to the kind of parkland blocks that are between the subdivision? lots and the abutting subdivision to the south well we call those the buffer zone yes that, that, okay. that, that that's the same pieces of property yes have they ever been surveyed i i don't know if there are bars in the ground but they are shown to scale on the drop plan which is prepared by a surveyor and the those buffer strips that you see on the current draft plan are the same area and dimension as the what is currently approved as the draft plan on this subdivision. So they have not changed from the previous version of the plan. Have they been surveyed? They've been drawn by a surveyor to scale. I don't know if there's actual bars in the ground yet. Okay, uh, well, if there aren't bars in the ground, I, I would strongly recommend that we do have bars in the ground. So we do know both the north and the south um, property lines uh, here. Uh, because, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, as you know, this buffer zone is a very contentious issue. Uh, so, okay, uh, I've, I've made my point about the surveying, and I would also like to see in the new subdivision, or the plant, the, the, the diagram of the new subdivision, of the lots that back on to the buffer zone, I think there should be a privacy fence built on the uh, on on the uh, on the owner's property where they back onto the buffer zone. That's why it's quite important that we know where the the, the at least the north boundary is of that uh, of of that unit. Uh, also, to um, in lieu of in lieu of a privacy fence which is probably six feet high. In lieu of that, perhaps trees could be planted 
um, in the uh, in the buffer zone to the north section of the where the property line would be. Councilor Cameron, what page are you on there? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on page zone. 85, we believe. 85? Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so I've mentioned, I've mentioned survey and I've mentioned fencing and I've mentioned uh, uh, tree planting. Um, now, when we get to the streets, the actual streets, are they planning, uh, I know they're planting a, a grass swale and I have two questions uh, regarding that. Number one, I think there should be curbs and gutters. Uh, and I think the swale should be in the design where it can be cut by the uh, by the property owner or the uh, yes by by the property owner uh, okay so we've got the the curb and gutter out of the way and uh, now block 50 you refer to block 55 and uh, 58 or 55 to 58 I believe you're asking for that to be open space. Now that that's actually going to be the roadway. Am I, am I correct on, on that assumption? No, block block fifty five. Well, block fifty five two fifty eight. Yeah, Mr. Ah, thank you. I'm just waiting for Tracy to uh, answer his question first, Mr. Mayor, and then I'll get to you. Uh, thank you. So box fifty five to fifty eight. Uh, hopefully showing on that plan that is being circulated are the two pedestrian path linkages from the new street to the what you're calling the buffer parkland blocks and then the two park parkland blocks so you should see 55 56 57 58 as the two pathways and the two park blocks so those would be a uh, parkland par par uh, blocks parcels to typically to be conveyed to the municipality for public use Okay, sorry, I think I've read that wrong. It is block 55 and 58. Uh, I don't see kind of the in between there. But 56 and 57 are the two big ones. Yes. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so it should be 55 through to 58. Okay. Okay, uh, yes, I, I, I do see that now, thank you. Okay, that's, uh, okay, that, that's fine, that answers me. Uh, and then the other, uh, on page 88, uh, you talk about a, uh, a storm pond. Whereabouts will that be actually located? Um, so I'm not sure if you have any drawing in your package that shows that. It's on the abutting lands to the north, which are also owned by Lockwood Brothers. So if you were looking at that draft plan in the key map that's in the top right corner, there are other lands labeled there. Uh, that's where the storm will be. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you have any engineering drawings in this package. I don't think you do. That would show you where the pond is. But it's on. So it's on the abutting land outside of the subdivision. That is also the way the currently draft approved plan was designed and was conditionally approved. So there will need to be a, some kind of ownership agreement, maintenance agreement between uh, the, the owner of that abutting land, which is Lockwood Brothers right now and the municipality for access, maintenance, and so on. So it's on. It's outside of this subdivision parcel. Okay, thank you. Uh, and my next one is the, uh, um, well, no, I think that, I think you've answered that question for me, thank you. Yes, now I'll just draw your attention to page 92. And that again is a, uh, Give me a moment to get there. Yeah, page ninety-two. Uh, there's a three-colored, uh, three-colored map there. Uh, phase one, phase two, phase three. Now, I'm still a little concerned here because I've mentioned two or three times that this buffer zone is a very contentious issue. We have a pink line in, encompassing and incorporating the buffer zone. We have a yellow line. Well, we know the yellow line is going to be a road. And then we have a blue line that is also seems to encompass the, the, the buffer zone. Now, if I was a resident and I lived on Meadowlands Drive, 
I think I might, and saw that, I think I might be suspicious of just how much of that buffer zone you're gonna use or any at all. So I would really like a comment here, here in public about that right now. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I obviously am not the developer, uh, so I'll speak as the planning consultant for the moment. Uh, so what you're seeing, uh, as you indicated, is the developer's intent of how he would phase the subdivision. So he would build the middle part of the site, the extension of um, St. Lawrence Street first, and then build the west side, and then the east side. Uh, I'm going to suggest, even though Mr. Lockwood's um, not here, that there's definitely some flexibility in how this is drawn. It's, uh, it's just drawn with highlighter. The message I think is that the intent is develop, to develop the subdivision in three phases. And I think if it's a township's wish that some of that park block be developed first, you know, or this very slightly, but then that's absolutely uh, your prerogative. And I, I think for draft plan approval, typically we would indicate that the subdivision is to be developed in phases. And then as we get into the details and the subdivision agreement, that's where the wording in your subdivision agreement, which you get to, you know, your staff would prepare and you get, you need to approve would be very specific in how the subdivision would build out in phases and, and how those phases work. The, the park block, so those parcels 56 through to 58, in the subdivision agreement, it will say that those are to be conveyed to the municipality, so they become park land, and so the developer can't avoid that. That will be a requirement, and I would suggest still to be determined what exactly happens in those blocks. So you as the municipality, as uh, I think it was Councillor Cameron, somebody suggested, you know, there should be some tree planting in there, perhaps a fence. Absolutely, I mean, it's going to be public park space, so there's certainly an opportunity for US Council to provide some direction on what you want to see there for parkland. The developer can't avoid dedicating that to the municipality, it will be a requirement. And in terms of the putting the bars in the ground, absolutely, that's a requirement. After draft plan approval, Mr. Lockwood will have to get his surveyor to put the, the surveyor bars in the ground for the entire subdivision. So it will be very clear where the limits of not just those blocks, but the entire subdivision streets and parcels will all have to be surveyed. I hope that answers the question. Well, yes. The, the, actually, let me let me redirect the question through the chair to the CAO. Mr. CAO, is, is what we know today as the buffer zone behind Meadowlands Drive, is that owned by the township or is that owned by the developer? Uh, what? Block 56 or 57 would comprise what you know as the buffer zone, and uh, that is owned by the developer. Um, he bought the he bought the what we refer to as the buffer zone. This is I'm sorry. This is this this is news to me. I didn't think I thought the buffer zone so, was part of the township. So block 50. Six and yes. 57, since the original draft plan of subdivision has always been a requirement uh, that it get transferred over to the township. Okay, that answered that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. CIO. That answers a lot of questions. Just pause uh, for a second, Councillor Cameron. Wendy, uh, did you want to? For the chairs, I just thought for reassurance, Councillor Cameron, in the old draft plan of subdivision, those are referred to as block 74 and 75. Correct. And if you look at the, the conditions for draft plan approval, condition number 10 says that block 74 to 77, as shown on the draft plan, shall be conveyed to the township of Edwards for Cardinal to satisfy park and dedication requirements. So we're recommending that those conditions be carried forward with administrative changes. Of course, we're going to refer to them as the blocks that they are in the environment. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I do appreciate that. Okay. Um, yes, that's actually, I think all the other questions have been answered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I may, through the, yes. through, through the chair, uh, I, I, I would confirm that the um, on the south uh, side that there are already survey bars in place on the south side. On the south side. South side. Okay, yeah. thank you. So yeah. where 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 those property lines? It shows them. It does. Yeah, it shows them. Okay. Thank you. All right. So.
somebody else has to go, or did, did Councillor Cameron take up uh, all the first no, okay. <laughs> I think Mr. Mayor wants in there. Councillor Dill. Oh, sorry. I put you off my, my apology if I did. Councillor Dill, don't argue over it. Just yeah. go. Uh, yes, I just um, have one, well, a couple questions in, in the uh, in the uh, provincial guidelines for affordable housing, it says in our in our plan, our official plan, we have we suggest that you have twenty five percent of our homes dedicated for that purpose. So is that out of the one hundred forty six? Does that mean you're going to be building thirty six homes over a five year period for affordable housing of two hundred ninety five thousand dollars? Which is the 295 I'm getting is from the Legion Grenville Preventive Guidelines. Thanks, Steve. Uh, and, and you're correct on correct on that. Um, uh, I see Tracy's taking her mic off. I think uh, I'll I'll ask her to speak on behalf of Mr. Lockwood. Yeah, if you could, Tracy. Uh, thank you. Um, the way the draft conditions are worded right now, there has not been a directive that. Uh, that 25% of the houses have to be built to that threshold. Um, I've had a lot of discussions with county staff and your own staff about how to implement the affordable housing targets uh, that are in your official plan and in the county's official plan. And uh, your uh, consulting planner has noted also in her planning report some reference to affordable housing. So. I don't, the short answer is I'm not sure if the township is requiring that, the draft conditions are not written that way at this point in time, but they can be if that's what you would like. Um, my client has made a commitment to uh, create smaller housing units and uh, a mix of singles and semis and townhouses, which inherently will be smaller units than all singles and to accommodate uh, secondary dwelling units. And that's been considered in the servicing report. Uh, so that's a way to add affordable housing. At this point, we haven't been told that 25% of the units have to meet that threshold. So I guess I'm waiting, I'm waiting for direction from the township on what will be required. Thank you. Yeah. So, so, so just, just uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, just to add on that, the, the the recommendation is to carry forward basically the conditions of 2017, and in 2017 there was no requirement with respect to uh, affordable housing. So that would be a, a, an additional uh, condition uh, that would be um, something uh, to for uh, committee and council to consider. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. So I have a number, if I may. <laughs> that seems to be so, the way tonight. <laughs> so to start off, I would like to first of all um, reinforce some of the points that Councillor Cameron made as it pertains to the buffer zone. And, uh, and I've always understood that Block 56 and 57 would be coming to the township uh, if the township didn't already own them. But I think Councillor Cameron has made the point that it's very important that the exact uh, that the exact boundaries of that specific land be identified early, early on. And the reason I say that is because many of the um, uh, owners on uh, Meadowlands South, that's the folks that live on Meadowlands Drive, have taken it upon themselves to manicure that block 56 and 57. They do a great job doing it. It is truly parkland and it will be to the benefit of both the residents of Meadowlands South and the new residents in the new Meadowlands North. So having said that, I see now uh, three additional issues that I would like to see addressed. The first is the issue of affordable and the the uh, aspirational 25% affordable. So there are many different ways for the uh, uh, developer to reach or to provide affordable. Uh, I would first of all like to really stress the point with, uh, with our group here that the 25% is, is an aspirational goal and I don't think we should be imposing that on 
that this developer in, or any developer. Uh, having said that, I wish there would be more uh, discussion around the concept of additional, uh, additional residential units. We all know that a, the definition now of a single family residence can include an additional residential unit, which is embedded right in the single family residence. So I think if uh, we should, first of all, relieve the developer of this 25% uh, aspirational goal, which is now hanging over all of our heads, because as the CAO has already uh, mentioned, that uh, concept was not around in 2017 when he entered down this path. So I'd like to get that out of the way to start with. Then the next issue that I saw that had to be addressed, and I think it has been addressed, I'm just looking through the chair for the planner to confirm this, was that the sewer and water servicing uh, for 146 lots be confirmed. And I think I read in the, in the, in the material that it is now confirmed. Can I just ask that question yeah. through the chair? Is that now confirmed? Through the chair, um, no. I, I think we would be surprised to find out that it wasn't, but we are waiting for that confirmation um, from the um, the engineer of the applicant. In fact, I noticed that my recommendation, um, I think, should say that um, recommend in favor of the proposed revision subject to the um, available servicing um, being confirmed so that it's consistent with no text mm -hmm. recommendation. My, my apologies. Okay, and just one sec, Mr. Mayor, I, th I see uh, Tracy's muted her mic, so let's give her the opportunity to speak yeah. as well. Yeah, I think I had indicated that earlier, but good question. Yes, um, I had hoped to have that servicing capacity confirmed <laughs> through a report for your meeting this evening, but I don't have that yet. So I agree with Wendy. I, I don't think we're going to see that's an issue, but uh, I do not have that final report, and I agree it should be noted in the staff recommendation that that needs to be confirmed. So. Hopefully I will have that this week for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Chair, now the fact that it has not yet been confirmed leaves me an opening to slide in an additional requirement. And the additional requirement is this, uh, our sewer treatment plan has a certain capacity to which we're now adding in this subdivision, 146 uh, additional residential units uh, that we know of. And of course, the, that includes single family residential, which may include an additional residential unit. So uh, our water plant has a certain amount of capacity that can support a certain amount. So not only am I interested in knowing that we have sufficient capacity in the water plant and in the sewer plant to handle this subdivision, plus the one we'll be talking about in a few minutes, uh, if this meeting doesn't last forever, um, uh, will we still have excess capacity in those two plants? That's the issue that I'd like to see uh, incorporated into the answer. So that's the next issue. Pause, pause for one sec. Let's let the uh, CAO one step. <laughs> if I may, for the chair, uh, and, and just, just to confirm that uh, we already have a, um, a draft plan of subdivision confirmed for 106. Um, so it is the additional capacity between 106 and 146 that that, that, extra. Uh, that, that servicing capability will, will uh, demonstrate. Okay. So, 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 so just can I yeah, go for one sec? So, so, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and if I may, one area that we are still um, um, struggling with a little bit is that the additional residential units um, don't seem to be um, um, captured within that servicing uh, capacity. As it, is, as, as it is right now, and I think that that's kind of a gap uh, province-wide yes. <laughs> with, 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 with respect to that, because it, it's typically based on on lot, and you have right, uh, you know, your 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 capacity is you know x persons per 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 uh, per, per dwelling, but it's it, it, it's a little bit uh, we're we're working through that. Right. So, Mr. Chair, that interesting to see what the plan is. 
So that gets us to an interesting concept because if we were to say to the developer, we'd like to see X additional residential units at affordable rates, then we would have a measurable against which to measure our available sewer and water. But if the CAO has articulated it exactly as it is because we don't know how many of those additional residential units may be incorporated into the single family residentials. So I'll leave that hanging. And my last issue, and I know that it goes beyond our 2017 agreement, but now is the time to bring it up. In view of the commitment that the council has made to uh, curbs and gutters in Johnstown and Spencerville, I would hope that, and I know it's an additional requirement of the developer, but I would hope that we would ask that the agreement include curbs and gutters, where curbs and gutters are at the edge of the roadway and the lot is graded up to the edge of the curb so that it can be um, a, a cut, the grass can be cut right to the edge of the curb. We've already approved underground drainage in the form of swales. I think they're called Dutch drains or something of such nature. Where, where the drainage is in a swale with a tile underneath it. We've approved that as the treatment. It's just the edge of the roadway treatment that I'm interested in. And that would require curbs and gutters to be installed uh, as part of the development. So uh, that's my three issues, Mr. Chairman. I'm waiting for a discussion on those three issues. And I've stated my position on all three. <laughs> Councilor Cameron. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to draw everyone's attention to pages uh, 122, 123, and 124, which is pictures of the, uh, well, they're, they're, they're pictures of houses. Um, my question is, and I, I think it's uh, through the chair to Tracy, are these the actual uh, bills that are going to take place? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, they are not necessarily, no. Um, we were asked to provide some renderings of homes that Lockwood Brothers built. So those are some examples. I would think it's fair to say, since uh, construction is probably not going to start here till the spring of 2023, assuming draft plan approval comes soon, I, I don't think there's specific design plans for these houses yet. But that gives you an idea of some of the product that Lockwood might construct. Thank you. Further comments? Further questions? Um, uh, I, I just want to weigh in a little bit on what both uh, the mayor and, and Councillor Cameron have said, and and it's uh, and Councillor Dillabaugh as far as affordable housing. So. Um, my, my take on, on uh, the, the way the sub, you know, the uh, subdivision is, has changed uh, since its original approval. Um, if I'm not, not wrong, it was in the 40s, I believe, um, the original single family home number was in, in the 40s. I believe, I believe the original was 49 single family. And then the intensification went to 106, and now the intensification takes it to 146. Which correct. So which yes, in 20, I, I believe in 2016, 2017, it went from 49 to 106, which uh, included a zoning bylaw amendment to allow for R1 and R2, which uh, provided for uh, some semi detached uh, units. Right. And, and in an attempt to, you know, in, intensify, uh, make the project worthwhile doing, they've, you know, basically shrunk the square footage of. Of units, which will further reduce the cost of each individual unit. Um, you know, as the as the sites get smaller, I think they'll be. Uh, I'm going to guess, but they're probably like a thousand to fifteen hundred square feet. Is that fair to say, Tracy? Yes, that's about the range I've been told. Yes. And so that I mean, that's not necessarily going to get us. You know, depending upon the finishings that one chooses to put in them um, to reach that twenty five percent goal, but it is conceivable that. The intensification itself, um, uh, going from 40 units 
uh, reducing the size uh, in theory uh, could reach that goal of, of 295 for 25%, depending upon the finishings that go in there. So uh, in my mind, um, that more than, than reaches the original goal. I mean, you already tripled it really in my, in my, in my opinion. So um, you get there, no problem. So I don't, I don't see the affordable, um, the affordable portion of it. Ultimately, it, it, it may or may not reach that but I think a lot of that's going to come down to how one chooses to finish the home that they buy, uh, whether they put carpets and hardwood um, or carpets or hardwood or granite or, or laminate. I mean, um, that, you know, ultimately will decide the finishing, the finished price. So um, I think we, we hit upon that in there. Other than that, I don't, I'd like to hear more discussion uh, from the other members when it comes to, uh, I think the, uh, uh, mayor's raised a good point with uh, respect to um, uh, curbing and gutters. Um, uh, so let's let's continue that thought a little bit, uh, Mr. Melton. I support the opposition that finish it off so that the, the property can be properly you know, maintained. You know, it, it's not going to do any anybody any um, benefit if if they can't maintain you know their property right to the road. Uh, I, I support uh, the position that the mayor, the mayor is putting forward. Councilor Hunter, do you have any comments? I don't really have a problem with it. I think a lot of the things we're talking about, about here really isn't uh, enforcing the draft plan of subdivision. We're getting in, into the final stages of, of our requirements for development of the subdivision. Um, back, listen. Into that, are we getting a little off then, Wendy? Or are we should we point point of order, Mr. Chair? I mean, I mean, when I'm looking at the recommendation in front of us, it says draft approval remain generally consistent with the conditions issued in 2017. Generally consistent wouldn't include the curves and gutters. So this is the time, in my mind, to add that requirement. Through the chair, this being my first subdivision that I had the pleasure of being a part of for Edward's proposal, um, uh, we, we still do need to prepare a subdivision agreement. And a lot of the conditions that we have, um, the conditions of draft plan approval will be incorporated into the subdivision agreement. I don't think they could be satisfied otherwise. So that's how some of those would be satisfied. And there, there could be some uh, um, additional items in the subdivision agreement. I wouldn't like to surprise the developer with um, large new items in a subdivision agreement that we haven't talked about ahead of time. So I don't, I don't mind having the conversation now. Okay. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Cameron, yes. Yes. Um, Councillor Dilla. Oh yes, yes, hundred percent. But like the mayor said, this is a time, and I, and. Uh, I know this was in 2017, but we did our official plan in 2020 and it stays 25%. I, I, it's not written in stone. I'm not saying <laughs> to the developer 25%, but I like to see something in at 295,000 as what's going on in Legion Grum. So that's, that's and I guess keep in mind, in 2017, this was a much smaller division subdivision. So um, I, I think I don't know if we could or should mandate something like that. I do like the idea of mandating curves and gutters, um, but I don't think it would be. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think, Greg, before I get to you, the CAO really wants to get in here. I've heard him twice. <laughs> no, go ahead. No. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, I just, I just want to remind committee that we really need to uh, look at um, those particular items as, as together, not in isolation. Um, I, I'm hearing a, a little bit of concern with respect to, to more affordable housing, and, and then we're, we're talking about a design that's going to add cost 
uh, to the developer that in return is going to add cost to the lot, which in return adds, adds, adds cost. And then we're, we're, we're adding costs and then we're potentially asking the developer to keep costs down to you know, a, a, a certain limit. So it's it, it just, about them. Correct. Correct, <coughs> but, but if you're looking for a Volkswagen and you can't, in certain aspects of the subdivision, you're looking for a Lamborghini. And that's a good point. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not Yeah, you may have to leave leather seats in the sunroof. I just want that's the, yes. Um, just, just to respond to that, there are some developers that do not buy, uh, do not build Volkswagen houses. There are developers who build Lamborghini houses. And if we're going to burden a developer that he has to fill so many affordable units, I think that's going to hamper him considerably. And, and I could also see some developers saying the heck with it. I'm just not going to build. I'll, 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 I'll build something else. I, so why did we put it in our official plan? Well, because it was a because it was a provincial. It was a force. It was a thing to do. Oh, of course, for bonus. It was for this absolutely. Right. Yes, this way. Okay. I think the way out of this is we we've already given the developer a way yes. out in many different ways. Great. Because we've 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 allowed a greater density. Uh, we've allowed a, a quite a number of um, duplexes and triplexes and even a larger. Uh, so those can all be constructed at a lesser cost than a single family dwelling. And then we still have the option within the single family dwelling, within the single detached dwelling, we still have the option for additional accommodation units. Uh, additional residential units, ARUs, and uh, I think I think that that provides the opportunity for the developer to to meet that to meet the concept of affordability. I think we would be helping the developer a lot if we said, you know, we would like to know that there are X uh, units identified as affordable. I do, I don't think it should be twenty five percent. I just don't think it's possible. But I think it is possible that 10% or 15% be identified or that he be or that he commit that at each phase he's going to include X number of, um, of affordable houses in each phase. Um, I, I don't I mean I'd like to have a suggestion from the planner or, or the developer or together what they would suggest as a target for us. Because I think it's important that we wave that banner when this uh, subdivision eventually gets approved, that we wave the banner that, listen, we may not have aspired to the aspirational 25%, but we're going to have this many units that will be identified as, a, as affordable, yeah. whatever the number is. And, I, and I'm quite prepared to hear from them as to what they think can be done here now that we've now that we've gone to 146, I'm prepared to go to the one, sorry, one, is it 146? Yeah, 146. I'm quite prepared to go to the 146, in spite of the fact that we're going to take a bit of flack for it. We know from the public meeting we're going to take flack for that. But I think, you know, now we'll get, it's time for a little bit of, uh, and both sides have to work together on this. Is there a comment from the planner back on that or just taking notes? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a big topic and you've got a big agenda. We could talk all night, but I, I do think we should continue the discussion. It, it's, a, it's a struggle because you heard from a number of your taxpayers at the public meeting that they weren't really keen on higher density here. They would prefer, I think, to see single family houses, which typically are bigger square footage and they're for a bigger price point. We have to balance that with a provincial policy statement and your own planning policy that encourages a mix of densities and uh, a mix of housing types and affordable housing, which often means smaller housing units. So to kind of find that balance and 
as I said earlier, I'm still struggling to kind of figure out how to implement this. So if you set a, a price point, you know, 25% or 10% or whatever have to be at that price threshold. And we need to figure out, and this is still kind of rolling out for us as planners, I think, how do we implement that? So does that mean at the building permit stage, the developer has to show that that house is not going to sell over a certain price or at the, when he lists it on the housing market, I just, I don't really know yet how to, how you kind of implement that. It's great to say 25% is going to be at that, at whatever the threshold is the, in the county stats. But then how do you implement that? <laughs> and how do we make sure that happens? So I, an ongoing discussion, I, you know, I do agree with the mayor, some of those key things like just simply smaller housing units, uh, semi-detached and townhouse units, which often have a lower price point and the opportunity for secondary dwelling units inside those dwellings in itself brings lots of opportunity for more affordable housing. So we definitely need to continue the discussion. Well, and, and uh, to further uh, your point, I think all of those go towards affordable housing, but I mean, what's affordable here uh, at 295 versus what's affordable in, in Brockville or, or move it to Prince Edward County or keep going towards Toronto and uh, your 295 is certainly a different dollar value. So, but, but is uh, just a point of information, yes. there, the, the province does the calculation and they give it to us on an annual basis uh, by United County. So it's for us, it's, yeah, it's for United County. Right, and what we've been lobbying for at United County's level is that even within the United Counties, we see four distinct regions, and we're asking that the calculation be given to us by region within the United Counties. And uh, I see when we get to the next item on the, uh, on the agenda that there is some, uh, some figures that come to us from the province for the year 2020. Mm -hmm. And we're now in 2021 and uh, Tracy is indicating to us that this is gonna be a 2023 development where prices can come down or go up. And I think we've seen the peak of this crazy market. And I think we'll see some prices coming down now, but I'm, I've got no crystal ball to know that. But it is yeah. definitely given it to us on a uh, county basis. Do we, as a as a as a council and, and as a committee, want to mandate a price that that a developer has to sell homes at? No, but it's not us. It's the province that's giving us those aspirational goals. May I suggest if you're going to put a goal at all, I I would suggest you don't want to put a dollar value into the subdivision or the conditions or the subdivision agreement, it should at least be referenced to those yeah. annual um, right. uh, statistics that the province releases, right? Not a 295,000 number or something like that. Cause that's certainly gonna fluctuate from year to year. That's crazy. Right. Connor, uh, Connor, I have your nomination. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, through the chair, just because this is a five year plus project, I don't think we, we should be uh, and now that it's intensified, I don't think we should mandate that. But things like curbs and, and stormwater management, like we're not asking for full sidewalks on both sides and, and you know, they're, they're, that's a meet in the, middle, in the middle sort of thing that I think we could help with the, the, the presentation of, the, of, of, each, of each home with a curb and a, a, an even lawn that everyone seems to want in a subdivision. I think, I think that's doable, but how are people going to be safely walking to this green space is another thing we should maybe think about if there's no sidewalks or no curbs. And if there's other concerns about increased traffic and such. Are there walking areas that have been set aside other than block 58 and 55 if because if there's no curb and <coughs> it's not a very wide street no sidewalk these are other things i'm trying to think about and i don't think it adds a lot to the expense of the development um, and i'm sure a lot of municipalities require double sidewalk and curbs and gutters on both sides Question. 
Well, we we did go around and ask if we all thought about uh, the curbs and gutters part. I'm just kind of adding on to that. You asking for sidewalks? No. I'm just saying. I haven't heard anybody could, other than you mentioned no, sidewalks. I'm, I'm yet, saying so. it could be worse. And the township's going to be um, obligated to move snow around in this subdivision and the next one. So we do want somewhere for all that snow melt to go. We do want it to be safely put off of the road. And if people can't walk on a sidewalk, how are they walking around in the winter with snow piles? So I just wanted to go back to what was brought up earlier. Point of information. Yes, sure. So point of information, just to talk about snow for a minute. Uh, so block 25 comes to us as a uh, comes to us as a an, an unopened roadway or a provision for a road allowance to the east. And so there's a provision there to move snow off that property and, and farther east. And block 36 provides the same opportunity to move snow to the north, which is where already the uh, what the water pond is going to be. Uh, block I uh, can't see the number, but the block, yes, it's block 60. No, it's not block 61. Block 61 is a walking path out towards Gill Street, but that whole corner, that the northwest corner is a, a block that provides opportunity to move snow off the property. So and the other thing I, I wanted to say is that we already know that in Meadowlands subdivision south, uh, which is, I realize it's not quite the same density as this is going to be, but nevertheless, uh, you know, people do use the roadway as the walking path. And uh, there doesn't seem to be much uh, conflict between cars and pedestrians because the traffic is really quite light. Uh, Meadowlands Drive is, is uh, you know, it, it's probably one of the heaviest uh, uh, developed of the bunch, but yet, you don't notice the people on the on the roadway because there's so few of them and the cars are so few and far between. I, I don't think we're going to get conflict here. And the traffic study would indicate that, that we're not going to get a lot of conflict between pedestrians and cars. At least the way I read the traffic study. Yes. Okay, Mr. Chair, and Excuse me for my ignorance on this. Where, where we, we've got the Canadian, the Canadian National Railway line. Is that the main line? No. Is that no? No, no. That's just, it isn't even Canadian, Canadian National. It's, it's, it's the one that goes to the factory. Line, maybe. Oh, is it okay? Good. Okay. Thanks. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. So um, we have a recommendation um uh, that's here somewhere i lost again can you can you read the recommendation for me again thank you yes absolutely chair and you can give me a chance to amend it as I read if you don't mind um that committee recommends that um council recommend in favor of the proposed revisions um subject sorry Yes. Can you help me out? Subject yeah. to the confirmation of um, sufficient servicing capacity. Yes. Um, and that the township conditions of draft approval remain generally consistent with the conditions issued in 2017. And I would add with the addition of curbs and gutters. And if that's in there, then I'll move it. Not yes, yes. What about a percentage of. Uh... Affordable housing. I think that's something that Tracy and, and Locke would have to come back to us with. I really do. I, I do believe as well that, you know, they're definitely, if we're going to make an agreement with them um, when, it, when it comes back for this. For this we can have that discussion when it comes back for the, the final. Approval. I think so. And I think the, the CAO's comment is, is heavily, I mean, we have to regard that pretty seriously. This is a 2017 agreement that's yeah. before, so before this whole concept of affordable housing came up. I think we have to get it in there, but I don't think we have to jump in, get it in with both feet, so to speak. I, I agree with Councillor Dillbaugh on that. Just don't know how to work it in. 
You want in? Well, if I may, Mr. Chair. Um, to, to, my, to my line of thinking is that we, we really have to, to decide whether we want to look at more affordable housing or affordable housing. And I think the concept is that we want to find you know more affordable housing, and that's done through a mix of housing types. Right. Like affordable housing, like if you if you you know, even if you don't use the price tag of two hundred ninety five, whatever the the twenty twenty one or twenty twenty three provincial guidelines field ownership is, it's very difficult to, to do that because you have the sale of the house, and then okay, I I I just I just purchased that for for two hundred ninety five thousand, and in three months time I put it up in uh, now now I'm selling it for four hundred and fifty thousand. Right. There's no, there, there, it's, it's as, as um, um, Tracy has indicated before, the implementation of that, extremely difficult. You know, at what stage and how long does it remain and how do you track that? And I think that, that a functional aspect of it is the mixed uh, housing types. Yeah. You, 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 you have that variety that's there and you're making it more affordable for more users. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we're uh, adding in, and so we're talking about the, the recommendation and additions and, and subtractions potentially to the recommendation. Councillor Huff. Well, I agree with our CEO. I think uh, as far as the affordable part go, goes, I don't know how we really mandate that you're going to build an affordable housing. Uh, provincial government's trying to put a build affordable housing and how many million dollars we get set to have you got anybody buying on to, to sign up to lock these places into affordable for like for time. So I think the mix here we got is going to bring the price down. Where it ends, 295 this year, as the mayor said, they've been for forecasting the 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 bubble in real estate is going to burst one of these times and prices are, are going to drop. Maybe that happens next year, maybe it happens in five years, maybe it never happens, but I think the only way you can try to adjust it is the size of the buildings you're building and as everyone said here, what type of finishes and stuff you put in and what it's going to sell for. Like people want wants to pay a Volkswagen price, but then they come in and ask the builder to put granite floors in and, and fancy kitchens in and stuff, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it's a thousand square foot house, but they've just added fifty thousand dollars worth of finishes to it. So, there's the curb and gutters. I, I can go, go along with it. I think it's a great, great idea. I just don't know whether in this particular plan, I guess it, as the mayor said, it gives a, a guide forward to a, a developer something that we're expecting from them, but I don't know whether that whether we're not getting ahead of ourselves and starting to add all the particulars in. I thought this was more than just approving the size of the lots and stuff and working from there is what we're going to actually require for the finishing product. So. Okay. Did you get a yes or no? Well, I think I mean, we got to realize we've got a draft subdivision agreement already in place. We have draft approval in place and we're final. We're at the stage now where we're signaling to county how we want that draft approval to be finalized. And now is the time to send the signal. Okay. I agree with the, the approach the, uh, the mayor is bringing in, you know, the, the curbs and gutter. And how we're, I don't think we need to be specific with the 25% or the 295. I think it's by, you know, as we've all said, the various types of homes that were, were it's going to be implicit in there. Yeah. 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 If we could, if we could just refer to privacy as well, uh, whether it be a uh, a fence issue or a uh, or a planting planting issue, as long as uh, as long as we do have some privacy uh, privacy concerns, uh, I'd be happy. Council? Yeah, I'm even I'm even happy just to to recommend even without the gutters. I mean, um, 
I know this is a time, but I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. We're talking about affordable housing. I mean, and we want this for a gentleman in my contractor to grow some cutters. And you, you think you, we're going to scare them off with affordable housing. So I, I'd rather just pass it the way it is and we'll work along. And that's another thing where, where uh, they can work with the planner. Uh, the contractor, the planner can work and see what the pricing is for the better team. If they can pay the day overall. So, so I'm happy just the way it is. I will go along. Carl? Well, where is the water supposed to go? I don't, I don't understand how the stormwater is all supposed to drain magically to the north end, and then that's where another subdivision is going to go in the future. Then where does it go from that? Same as Block 36. That's supposed to be the roadway to the next subdivision, so, is it not? Pause for one second. Tracy, do you want to address the, the stormwater management plan? Uh, well, as much as I can as a planner, but what I wanted to say was if you look at the draft plan conditions, which uh, start around, I don't know, page uh, 97 of your report. So obviously we'll need to be tweaked a bit to match this current plan. But if you look at the conditions starting around 21, 22, 23, uh, there's conditions there that require the developer to provide a detailed stormwater management design. This is similar to every single subdivision. Uh, so the coming up to draft plan approval, what you've got, what everybody has reviewed is conceptual stormwater management and servicing after draft plan approval. There are many conditions there. Those uh, several, for example, require the developer to do detailed stormwater management design, uh, sediment and erosion control, and all of, you know all of those other civil engineering things that have to come and be approved by the conservation authority and your own staff and your peer reviewers. Uh, prior to registering the subdivision. So uh, if you want to modify those conditions, of course you can, but we don't necessarily have to predetermine uh, exactly how that design is going to look tonight because Mr. Lockwood can't register this subdivision without doing the detailed engineering design, stormwater design, and so on to everybody's satisfaction. So those details are definitely still to come. Um, I, I can't really comment, unfortunately, on what might happen if the future lands to the north develop, what will happen to the stormwater uh, facility and the outlet to that facility? I, I don't think that's been designed yet. So unfortunately, I don't really have an answer for that comment. Thank, thank you. Further comment? Well, just in five years, we'll just have to remember that we didn't want to put something in concrete to uh, as a plan B for when when the settle, settling ponds are no longer available to be in the spot where they originally planned to be. Well, Mr. Chair, the, the, the owner of the land will decide that. Okay. He's going to decide how it, what, whether that north side is available for future development or isn't, whether it can be or can't be. One thing we know for sure is that to develop further north requires a lift station guaranteed, absolutely. Okay, back to the recommendation as it originally was written. So, so before we do all of any changes to it, um, I, I've lost my page, I have no oh. 73. <laughs> I don't know, 73. Oh, that was Right um, that's not the recommendation. That's the 75, requirement. 75 is the recommendation. Do the chair. I'll move that recommendation. Is, as, that, amend, is that amended as? No, as, I'll move it as, as what it is to say. Well, just I think Wendy wanted it amended. Um, just add subject to the um, confirmation of sufficient servicing capacity. Which I know Tracy is going to provide for us in the next week or so. So before it goes to council, we will have confirmation of sufficient servicing capacity. Oh, for the I, I for agree. the uh, water and sewer. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so okay, so you've moved that. So before we can go any further with anything else, it, is there a second or then? I'll check. Okay, now. 
How do I proceed? Do I call a question or do I go for more discussion? No, on? because I'm going to move an amendment. You're, You're going to move an amendment. That's where I was going. With it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm moving an amendment that we add the words with the addition of curves and gutters. Just right after 2017, take out the period and add the words with the addition of curves and gutters. Put the period there. Looking for a seconder. Okay, so we have a seconder now. Okay, so help me on procedure here. Vote on the amendment. Vote on the amendment first. And okay, so is there further discussion on the amendment? <laughs> amendment only. You affordable housing. No, no, that's not part of the amendment. No, it's not part of the amendment. So just, just, just what the mayor said. Just what the mayor said. Okay, so we're going to have a vote then now. Nobody else has any comments as far as curbs and gutters go? Okay, let's vote then. So all in favor of adding curbs and gutters? Aye. So one, two, three, four. So it, it passes then, uh, four to three. So... Uh, curbs and gutters get out. Uh, no, now, the full recommendation. The full recommendation. So, one, just so because it's a mess on my page. So, the committee recommends the council recommend in favor of the proposed revisions of the township conditions of the draft plan approval remain generally consistent with the conditions issued in 2017 with the addition of curbs and gutters and with. Subject to the confirmation of sufficient servicing capacity. Okay. Everyone understand? I do. We're good. All right. So let's call the question on that one then. All in favor? Aye. All right. So unanimous. We're good. All right. Oh, could I could I just ask one, one question? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the no, it's all right. Um, yeah. Do it. Don't worry about it. There'll be another discussion. They're right. <laughs> you have way too much to say. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I could just um, uh, ask Are one question <laughs> before we go on. Yes. So the um, the draft uh, plan of uh, agreement, subject to final approval, of course, is starts on page ninety seven, and it runs from page ninety seven through to page 103. Uh, those are the pages that have the various conditions of the subdivision agreement. So uh, I'd just like to understand the procedure now. Uh, does the county revise this, uh, this draft and does that draft come back to this committee or does the count? Well, first of all, this committee made a recommend is going to make a recommendation to council at the end, of, and council is going to deal with it at the end of the month. Then it's going to go to the to the county planner. Is that right, Wendy? Yes. Okay. Now the county is going to uh, they're going to do something with this draft plan agreement, right? They're going to change it or change or what, what changes will they make to it? Yes, yeah, so the counties will um, make a decision on the proposed amendments from the applicant, and um, they will they will make changes to this uh, agreement based on the comments from the township, from the conservation authority, from CN Rail, um, and they will make a decision on that. Then we need to start preparing a subdivision agreement because some of these conditions can only be cleared through a subdivision agreement. You know, some of the conditions are that a subdivision agreement is prepared that includes a clause that X, Y, Z. Um, so um, once all of the conditions are met, including that subdivision agreement, then they have draft plan approval. Right now. Tracy, Tracy, like she, yeah, yeah. Tracy looks like she wants in. So. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so uh, what you have uh, starting around page 97 there are draft plan conditions. So this is not an agreement, really. These are uh, draft plan conditions, which I expect your staff will kind of tweak to match the current draft plan. And hopefully, as a council, you will pass. They will go to the county. And uh, as Wendy said, the county will compile your conditions together with recommended conditions from Conservation Authority and agencies and so on. The county will issue draft plan approval. So it will be similar to this list, modified slightly. 
Uh, and then after that draft plan approval, uh, then Mr. Lockwood has a, usually a three-year time period to deal with all of those conditions and get the subdivision registered. So big tasks will be the detailed engineering design for the road and the lots and the stormwater that I mentioned, a subdivision agreement that uh, Wendy mentioned the township will prepare. Um, we will need to come back to you as council to pass the zoning bylaw amendment. So we had the statutory public meeting for that in September, but then we will need you as council to pass the zoning amendment. Uh, the surveyor will need to, we say monument the site, put all the bars in the ground for the whole subdivision and lay out the whole site create a final subdivision plan. There's quite a few tasks that Mr. Lockwood and his team will need to do uh, prior to a lawyer uh, actually registering this subdivision and, and uh, executing the subdivision agreement with the township. So all of those things come after draft plan approval. Does that help? Sure. Satisfies so the question. Read 97 and onward. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and and I think so. There's no further questions of Tracy. That's um, that's it for tonight, Tracy. Right? Yes. All right. Thank you very uh, much, everyone. I appreciate your time. You being, yeah. Thank you for being here and thank all uh, and answering all the questions and getting the uh, the changes and addressing the condition, the concerns that uh, the residents um, raised at the public meeting. You're very welcome. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. So good night. All right. Moving on to um number four six a four which is the uh, proposed revision to plan of subdivision lockmasters meadow edwardsburg uh, developments and uh, wendy i'll have you do um an introduction to that but i believe um it's i haven't heard two mr sorry it's on part two if you're on your pdf if you're using pdf it's on part two no i haven't got there I, okay. no, I can't find it online. Mine somehow got deleted. Uh, I just want to recognize, is it Mr. Simpson? Simpson? Mr. Simpson. Sorry. Um, so, for development is here. Correct, correct. Okay. So um, we, it's not a delegation and a presentation. So the discussion will happen among committee members. But if uh, committee members have questions for Mr. Simpson, um, I think I'm, you know, allow a little bit of leeway um, and and, and he can clear up some some things if there's some issues in, in, in that. Okay, Mr. Chair, yes, absolutely. I don't take offense. And similar how um, we worked with um, Tr Tracy and Sander on the on the previous sure. items. You have questions that I think that may that may help guide us through through this. So um, so do you want to give us some background then, Wendy? Mm -hmm. First, just open it up. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes, Mr. Chair, we have uh, uh, received a request um, through the counties. Um, for um, the Lockmasters Meadows, previously known as Edwardsburg <coughs> Development um, Subdivision, um, for, for some changes to that plan of subdivision. These are considered minor, it's considered a minor amendment. So unlike um, the Meadowlands North, where we had a public meeting to consider to help consider these changes, um, the uh, applicant is requesting just two additional um, lots previously approved for 93 lots. Now he's requesting 95 lots, and also some changes to the noise attenuation conditions that are um, in the conditions of draft and approval. Um, I want to add that I don't think that as staff we have quite all the information we need, or have done all the research that we need to do to consider the noise attenuation um, conditions. So I apologize for that. Um, but I, I do, I, I am interested in hearing the committee's um, comments on the proposal. The counties has asked that, again, we consider affordable housing for this proposed amendment. And they've also asked um, that we consider um, active transportation by sidewalks for this proposal. Um, so I'm interested to hear the committee's comments on that. We have a report prepared by our Center of Record Novatech. Um, and um, I guess maybe I'll stop there and let some committee discussion happen, but I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I think 
I'm going to go a little out of the box and I'll ask Mr. Simpson if he wants to make any uh, opening comments. Do, do you want to make any quick comments at all, Mr. Simpson, or do you just want to answer a few questions if they come your way? You don't have to make any comment at all. I would prefer if you have any questions or perhaps I can comment later. Yeah, okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so let's open it up for discussion then. Uh, Go ahead. Get a Thank look you. again this time. Well, I only have a half of work this time. Uh, uh, sorry, it's not so available, Bob, but uh, that's, I just have these questions. The first question I have uh, is there going to be a public meeting somewhere through, down the line? Through the chair? No, not with the proposed not with uh, amendments. They are mm -hmm. considered Okay, all right. The second question is uh, I'd just like to know where these two additional lots are. I think the one in the green on page, um, I think it's page 138, there's a diagram of the subdivision, and then there's the uh, uh, the green, it, it's done in red, and then there's a green. Where, where is that? Where is the, I see one lot, where, where might be the other one? To be honest with you, I have no idea. They were, were just, uh, it was just the way it was configured originally. And uh, as our engineering group got involved in it, they um, had some minor tweaks to make. And as they were making the minor tweaks, they picked up the two additional lots. Okay, so they could be just anywhere in that in that schematic. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's... If we may, we, yes. we can certainly clarify that. I'll, I'll turn that over to the community development coordinator. The, the counties in uh, in sending the proposal to us describe the two additional lots located on the southern internal block, which is part of phase one of the development. Okay. And okay. I'm gonna. I have this printed larger for. I guess if I may on, on page 139 of 218, right? you'll see figure two. If you if you if you look at um lot 83 and 88, oh, yeah. those, 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 those are the two additional uh, lots added. On 83, is that right, uh, Mr. CEO? Well, uh, 80, 83 and 88. If you okay, yeah. If, yeah. You, if you count if you count sort of the number of, 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 of lots, two additional lots. Uh, oh, correct. Yeah. You see that? Uh no, because uh when I punch in a, uh, a number to go to, because this is part two, it doesn't take me through the 183. And so I've got to scroll down, just bear with me. Yeah. Okay, yes, uh, yes, I see that. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I can get that. Now, I just want to, I have another question on, uh, on page 188. But uh, I'm sorry, folks, I've just got to get here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And what it, again, again, I'm looking for privacy because this, this subdivision does not have a, a buffer zone between, between the, uh, between the existing houses that are there, and I'm just wondering if, uh, again, uh, if we uh, if we can uh, get some kind of privacy between. And there's only a few of them, which is on the south the corner. South, yeah, would be the southeast corner. Uh, From yes, fourteen to twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, that 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 would roughly be it. It's just there are some houses quite close there, and, and, and I think there should be uh, uh, some privacy afforded these people again, whether it be fencing in the backyards or uh, or even uh, even trees uh, planted to uh, to just cut down some of the uh, some of the privacy concern there. And then my next one is, uh, I think we're all right there. Got to find a better way to get the scrolling faster. Okay. 
No, you I think uh, I, I, yeah, I think we're I think we're okay. I'm I'm just not going to uh, concern concern anything there. I think I would be if I if I read into the the way that the previous subdivision went, I have a feeling my question here has been answered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all. Okay. Um, if if I may, I, if I may, I I'll I'll ask one. So. Uh, the additional two lots appear to be uh, at, at the cause of, uh, you know, uh, shrinking the existing lot lot sizes down. Like seventy one is no longer thirty some feet, or seventy two is no longer thirty feet. It's it's uh, twenty five thirty or or thirty thirty feet fifty inches. So it's it shrunk a little bit, and then like uh, lot ninety four is now a fifteen foot frontage instead of a sixteen and a half. I think or 15 and a half. So, uh, but all of those still conform to to what our zoning bylaw is as far as as far as front engine area. Yeah. The, the numbers have changed. They're different. So. Yes, I believe so. And I um, I'm looking for where that's written in the Wetex report. Sorry. So maybe we can clear that uh, sure. later. Yeah. Um, and for, so further questions, Craig, do you have concerns, comments? Sean, that's a hundred, sorry. Well, I kind of, as the camera mentioned along behind the existing houses there, one resident cardinal mentioned along, along there, there's uh, quite a tree line along there and there's a lot of wildlife that, uh, Nest in there in the spring along there. So, uh, I think uh, there might be possibly some concerns from surf nation along, along there if they're disturbing well, like habitat along there. There should be some kind of bird, some kind of tree line or something along there to protect behind the houses there. Not just quite sure how I was on council when we this was originally brought up. It was a very strong recommendation that there be a burning or noise along the South Railway line there. And now it seems to be they want to do away with that burning with just a warning that they're near a track. That's what I all of a sudden that could change. We didn't need burning. So. I, I can respond to that. So that um, that proposed revision is um, it, it's up for debate tonight or, or going forward. The applicant has provided um, an engineered study um, that uh, by the <coughs> wind that um, suggests that the uh, the criteria has changed over the years and the the, the requirements have. So they've updated. Um, I guess what they're proposed and what the proposed noise attenuation um, measures are, and that's reflected in the proposed uh, revisions that we received. So that's for us to consider whether or not we still would require those uh, that that noise firm, which I think was a five meters. Uh, I just it appear, appears from this local viewing i guess the rail line seems to be getting busier all all, all the time time so i don't know how well, over 40 grades a day come up that all of a sudden we need less protection i think we be more noise protection we'd be looking for instead of less so mr mayor uh, can I go last? Yep. Uh, Mr. Sure. Councillor Cameron, you have already won. I have a I have thank you. Councillor Lillowoff. No, I'm fine right now this time. Con? Um, nothing. Uh, so my only uh, question, uh, Wendy, so we have we have a peer review of, of the firm. We don't have a peer review of the firm. Or, we do, yes. My, the way I read things was that we wanted the five meters to stay. Um, that 
Um, Mr. Simpson wanted it either gone or reduced in order sort of, that's sort of a, an open discussion. Uh, yes, yeah, Chair. So we have uh, the engineer study provided by uh, uh, Mr. Simpson that tells us that the firm is no longer required and recommends some um, condition or no, some clauses that will be put on the uh, purchase and sale agreement. Um, and we have had a peer review completed of the study, which um, I, I believe is generally um, in agreement with the noise study that was submitted. Sorry, I thought I included the peer review on here. I think they were texted in their report. Um, although they, they did mention that the decibel levels for the outdoor living area are close to, like they're, they're approaching the, the maximum. Um, so they suggested that if the berm were going to be um, done away with, then we might consider requesting some uh, a, a condition for um, passive noise attenuation measures, like a fence or some brush. Um, in, in, if that berm were gone, I think if that noise berm were in place, then those would not be um, necessary. But um, I do understand that the applicant has um, prepared an updated plan that includes the berm. If you look at CN's comments, they have commented that a safety berm of two and a half meters um, would still be required because although the homes are um, greater than 120 meters from the railway right of way, which would say, okay, we don't need that berm. Um, that is the, that open area is labeled as parkland. So if that parkland is going to be within 120 meters of the railway right of way, CN would like um, a two and a half meter safety berm there. So that two and a half meter safety berm might provide some noise um, re reduction for those residents. So we um, might ask for an update to the engineer study or we could um, send it to Greer Galloway who did the peer review and say with this updated plan that shows a two and a half meter safety berm, does that provide enough um, noise attenuation? Okay, so in, uh, help me out a little bit here. Uh, in the original approval, there was a berm. Yes. Right. And it's a five meter berm. Yes. And the recommendation, the way that it's written, doesn't include any changes to the berm, just in, um, an increase uh, for 93, 94, and 95. The recommendation from uh, Novatech, which is, um, I tried to copy what Novus I could recommend to us in the staff recommendation um, is that we um, keep the conditions of draft plan approval generally consistent with what has already been approved and that does include the five meter firm. I think that staff could work a little bit more with the developer um, in looking at the updated plan that um, I, I haven't received yet but I know has been prepared um, and maybe that firm would be uh, sufficient. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so I have a, quite a number of issues here, and uh, I'll just go through them one at a time, if I may. So first of all, with regard to the additional two lots, I have no problem with that at all. Uh, but we do get to the issue of affordable units and how we're going to address that, because clearly we can't uh, we can't step aside the provincial policy statement and and the world as it exists today. So we're gonna to have to have some sort of an indication from the developer as to how he intends to address that. And perhaps it's by indicating that a certain number of the single family residentials will have additional residential units built into them. That may be one way, or perhaps it's by coming back to us looking for a greater mix. But that is an issue that has to be dealt with. I'm back to my other issue of curbs and gutters. And I would like to see curbs and gutters as a condition of draft, uh, draft plan approval. Now, the counties wants us to address on page 142, the counties wants us to address the issue of access to the West. And I believe on page 142, they say to us, um, uh, through Novatech, a condition requiring an access block to the abutting lands to the west could be added as a condition 
or add into the revised draft plan. So I think that issue has to be addressed as recommended by Novotech. Well, that's page 142 where uh, Novotech brings it into effect. Now we get to the question of the berm. And there's two types of berm, apparently, a noise berm and a safety berm. And the noise berm seems to have been uh, ruled out, but the safety berm seems to remain an issue. And uh, as, as identified by CN in one of their uh, comments, and I think it's their comment is on, uh, I can't, I probably won't be able to find it now, uh, on page 203. And on page 203, CN encourages the implementation of the following criteria. And they talk about the safety berm. And then on uh, number two, they talk about the owner shall install and maintain a chain link fence, minimum of 1.83 meters in height along the mutual property line. The safety fence and its characteristics must be illustrated on the site plan. Now, uh, again, I'm, I'm I'm indicating to the committee that if we don't address these issues, the phone starts ringing. I guarantee it. And so that is an issue, and I don't know at what stage it gets addressed. But I'm going to turn my attention now to the last issue that, that I find worrisome. So starting on page 162, we have the conditions of draft plan approval and the date of the original decision of draft plan approval was April the 21st, 2013. And as the CAO has already pointed out, the world has changed in a big way in the past eight years. And so in these conditions of draft plan approval, there are some changes that are minor with just referring to different block things and things like that, like that, I have no problem with. But when we get into wholesale changes, such as those that we find on page uh, on page one sixty six, I mean there are whole paragraphs type taken out uh, where these are warnings that we've accepted that those warnings should be in the uh, draft plan conditions of the previous subdivision that we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, the type C warnings in the, uh, in the uh, offers of sale and pur purchase and sale, the type D warnings, uh, those are in there. Uh, then, uh, you know, there's, there's a number of these wholesale paragraphs that are taken out that I think require further study. And I, I'm not sure at what point the developer comes back to us to address those. Uh, and I, I don't know whether tonight is the time or not, because it seems to me that what we're dealing with tonight is approval on this level, where there's another set of approvals coming uh, later on. So I'm raising basically six issues here, Mr. Chair. And I don't know how to deal with them, and I'm looking for a direction from staff. So, staff's asked, yeah. Um, through the chair, I, I don't know that I caught all six of those, but I'm going to go through the ones that I, I, I made note of as you were speaking, Mr. Mayor. So, um, the um, uh, recommendation from Novatech about road access to the lands to the west. That is also in the um, stack recommendation. And Mr. Simpson, I know isn't surprised by this um, request. Um, I think he agrees that off of street D um, would be appropriate and probably could be accommodated in a revised um, draft plan. So that's right along the north there. I think some of the lots might have to be a little bit smaller if the zoning allows, um, and there could be road access provided from Street D. So, um, if the staff recommendation is um, approved by the the committee, then we could make that um, a condition. Or the other alternative is just to give up Lot Thirty Eight. 
Yes, that's a, another suggestion that Nova Tech had if we wanted Street B to continue yeah. forward. Yeah. I think it, there's already seems to be some room there to continue with Street D. So um, the, the developer thought that that made the most sense for the plan. Yep. Um, for, I have a note here for C and conditions. Oh, in the um, conditions of draft plan approval, notice that um, the conditions on here are, are laid out so that we can see, um, I'm gonna give you a page number in just a second. Um, looking at noise attenuation, uh, it starts on just the very bottom of 165, so I'm going to say 166. And then after that, there is um, CN rail on page 168. So everything under CN rail, those are conditions that CN has requested. So in CN's comments to the counties, those should be addressed under CN rail as CN's conditions. So we know they'll be taken care of because the counties will take into consideration CN's comments. So can I stop you there for a second? Mm -hmm. So just dealing with that on page 168, mm -hmm. CN rail. So I see uh, clause 35 has been taken out. And now that's, I thought that was a CN rail condition. The owner shall in install and maintain a chain link fence a minimum of 1.8 meters height along the mutual property line. I thought that was a CN condition. It's 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 crossed out on on the on the draft plan here. Just yes, through the chair. So CN received the same package that the township had received with these proposed changes, and they've made those comments on the proposed changes that um, that that they've received. So CN saw those changes and said, "No, I think we'd like a condition of." The chain link fence. So oh, okay. So it's a question of I've um, yeah. got to read them in the right order. I, I yes. yes. Okay. All right. So so then we get back to clause thirty five gets reinstated if we acquiesce to CN's request. If we agree with CN's request, do we? Is it us that acknowledges CN's request at this stage, or or does county deal with CN's request, <laughs> or do we deal with this whole package? <laughs> Um, through, through the chair, I think it should be the counties dealing with CN's request, but it, it, it is in our package. We can consider it. We might agree with some things and want them. Sure. Clearly, when we made the 2013 conditions, the township had some concerns with um, noise attenuation, and we had our, our own conditions here. And I think some of those mirrored CN's conditions as well. So page of the very bottom of page 165, or I should say page 166, those are townships conditions for noise attenuation. And what's been crossed out um, or added in red are the changes um, that have been proposed to us. Okay, but see, uh, and again, those, those conditions, I'm, I'm talking about clause 30 here, um, where, we, where we want all units shall be equipped with forced air heating and central air conditioning, uh, it says forced air heating with central air conditioning. So I don't know that's that the same. Then, then clause B, the inclusion of warning clause type C in all offers of purchase and sale. And type C, uh, the wording is this dwelling has been fitted, da 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 da. I, I think the inclusion of, a, of that warning clause should be there. The inclusion of warning clause type D on all lease and purchase and sale agreements, type D. This dwelling has been supplied with a central air conditioning system, which will allow windows and exterior doors to remain closed, thereby ensuring that the door, da, 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 da. I mean, it looks like they agree to clause D, but not to clause C. Is that what I'm reading here? Uh, so through the chair, um, the uh, noise study that was submitted suggested that um, instead of clause C, type D be added. So the red, writing there is being added to the draft conditions and the, the black lines are what is being removed. If it's easier to review, I did take a close look at those conditions 30 to 32 and made a chart in the staff report just to compare what the requirements were. And it's a summary, it's not worded exactly the same, but it'll give you a summary as what was previously um, approved in phase one and what is being proposed in phase one. And then the same for phase two. I will give you a page number in just a minute. Okay, I think I saw that and maybe didn't fully comprehend what you were trying to tell us. Page 134. 
Yes. Let me get there. Yes, 134. See, so I see existing conditions for phase one. The existing conditions for phase one were forced air heating and provision for central air conditioning. And those, those, that condition is taken out. It's actually only required for phase two, and it's all units equipped with forced air heating and central air conditioning. So as before, it was, um, it needed to be equipped with provisions for central air conditioning. Now it needs to be equipped with central air conditioning. But, and that's only on phase two development, no longer proposed for the phase one development. Why don't those pure people in phase one need air conditioning? If you look at the plan, the phase two is um, much closer to the rail right of way than phase one. I understand so that. I understand that part. And so the concept here is that we're providing you with air conditioning so that you can leave your windows closed and you don't get the noise. But that isn't the only reason you have air conditioning. No, I mean, I mean, I understand it, but it's not the only reason. One moment, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Simpson, one second. Yeah. I, I apologize for interrupting, but but Mr. Mayor, it's so far from the tracks that it's outside of the area. If if um, the phase B section were not within a certain range of the tracks, we wouldn't even need a noise study. But what we're asking and and. Um, we haven't asked for the removal of all of those items. We've only asked for the removal of the ones that are outside of the distance required. Um, as far as the berm is concerned, the original approval was based on a five meter berm with a, a noise barrier above it. And actually what we've come back with based on quieter trains and whatever other issues have come up in the last number of years. What we're asking for is a removal of that noise barrier and a reduction in the height of the berm, but we're um, still providing additional soundproofing for the houses that are within a certain distance of the tracks so uh, again to the chair i don't want to get into a debate with mr simpson it's not the right time or place but just to respond um, i don't have any problem with the removal of that barrier that's not the issue here the issue here is that and i'm talking strictly about the air conditioning from the point of view that in phase one there's no condition that it be required because it's away from the tracks which i can understand in phase two, it is required because it's closer to the tracks, which I also can understand. The political reality of it is, though, that the people buying this house have the provision for air conditioning. The people that are buying this house don't. Now, I know they're built at two different phases, but the guy that's buying it doesn't always understand it. What they concluded in as basics in there, they're not including in basics here. And, you know, that's that's my point. It's just the reality of the marketplace. One place you're guaranteed to have the air conditioning so you can keep your windows closed. The other, the other phase you're not. And I know that B comes, A comes before B, but that's not the issue. Do you have a further question or comment no. for, for Mr. Simpson? Thank, thank you for coming, Mr. Simpson. Um, is, is there... Fair point. Go ahead. Do you have a response to that? Uh, why there's a sort of discrepancy and why, well, that's why one phase kind of well, well, it's just the distance from the tracks. Yeah. With the air conditioning, sorry. Exactly. The, the air conditioning and the central heating allows somebody to keep their windows closed. Um, but, but if you were doing another subdivision that was more than two or three hundred meters from the tracks 
this wouldn't even be discussed. It would be totally at the builder's option to provide air conditioning or not. But because this project extends to the tracks, then there's a, a distance from the tracks that requires uh, disclosures in the agreements. And we've got that in the, the gradient wind where we've got to provide um, the warning clauses and so on. So that's all part and parcel and we're not changing that. The, the point that the, the mayor is making is that um, we're kind of discriminating, but we're really not because everybody can have air conditioning, everybody can have central heating. It's just the distance from the tracks that requires us to implement it into the area that's closer to the tracks. Okay. It's totally optional <clears throat> for everyone else. Yep. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Simpson. Um, CAO? No, just through the chair. The reality is that, uh, that that's required in phase two because the only way that you're able to make that noise is with the windows closed. The so by, 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 by having the air conditioning at the forest. Right. Yes, Councillor Hunter. Well, I see everybody has, has the option to have the air conditioning, but my whole point, point is here, this is guaranteeing the air conditioning and, and here is just a method of getting away with not having to build a bird. They're doing away with sound sound barrier. Mr. Mr. Simpson, just they're doing away with a sound barrier here and going to add extra protection here, so you meet the barrier sound decimals. With the windows closed. Not everybody wants to keep the windows closed. Okay. Um, I thought I heard something in that side. No, 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 you didn't, but. But I'm going. I'm, I'm just going to make a comment here. I live probably two miles, three kilometers from the railway track, and I hear the trains. If I'm sixty feet away, I'm going to hear them a lot more. Absolutely. Okay, so two staff, get me back out of the weeds here. We're, <laughs> yeah, exactly. we're, we're getting way out in the, the woods here. So, um, the chair, help, I, help me out. Through the chair, I know that Mr. Simpson has prepared an updated plan that includes a berm. I would suggest that with the updated plan, we also have sent him some uh, comments based on the peer review we received on the noise study. Um, those comments are included as an uh, attachment to Novatech's report in the in the package. But we've sent those uh, questions to Mr. Simpson. Um, so I suggest that, that we um, take another look at the um, engineering study and peer review comments. Let staff do that with Mr. Simpson um, and the new plan that I know he has prepared. And we could come back to um, a, a committee with some recommendations on the yeah, because the, the recommendation that's here. Um, uh, to, to do that do, certainly doesn't address road access. And I, I think, um, or does it? Uh, yeah, on page 136. So it's part of, it's included as part of this recommendation. Uh, road access, yes. Oh, yes, it is. Future yeah. expansion of street, street B to street B. Okay. Yeah, this, and this is based on Novatech's um, recommendations in their report to us. And um, uh, upon review of, of the materials, um, they felt that we should carry forward with the conditions um, of draft plan approval right. that were already approved in the 2013. And reading through that, the uh, condition that was brought up by Councillor um, Cameron and <coughs> Councillor Hunter about houses 14 to 21, I saw when I was reading through it as well that that, that is included to the township satisfaction, correct? Sorry, houses 14 What's the privacy yes. issue? Can you show me? Can you tell me what page it's on? Uh, I believe I believe it's one sixty nine of two eighteen, and it used to be item forty one, and I think it's item thirty seven. Oh, the one that's been changed under landscaping and street streetscaping. One sixty nine. 
that's that's correct. Mr. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, the owner agrees to provide additional planting where necessary to provide a buffer between the existing properties and lot 1421. Right. So that's in the existing, okay. right? It's just the only thing that's changed is it was item 41 and it's now item 37, correct? If we would like to accept the proposed. Otherwise, it's no, still no, item is, 41. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. What, when do you want it? Is your recommendation still what's here, or are you recommending that we defer this to another? Well, if I may, I think what we're looking at is that recommendation that sort of indicates that the increase uh, of lots from 93 to 95. Yes. The additional access. Yes. And uh, basically the uh, the, the 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 draft conditions remain consistent with uh, the 2013 um, draft conditions, which is basically 152 to one. Sixty one. Okay. One. I'm sorry. One fifty two. The what? One sixty one. Which is basically uh, no protection recommendation. Uh, I can get that right now. Okay. So not the the one sixty nine onwards, but right, but before that, the original, right. the original twenty thirteen. Yes. So I understand the, the nub of the recommendation here, but my problem is with the last, with the last phrase and that the standard conditions imposed in the 2013 draft approval are carried forward. But that's where we need to have more discussion. And I'm quite prepared to set that issue aside for tonight and approve the recommendation up until that point. But when it gets to the standard conditions imposed in the 2013 draft approval, I, I've got a lot of problems there. And, you know, I mean, I, I think there's serious issues. Uh, I'm on page 170, and there's a whole strikeout of a, of a major paragraph. So hold on. So I think, yeah. it, it, and I find this super confusing too, but yeah, there would so, be nothing strike, like the original one wouldn't have anything stricken, correct? Correct. So uh, an attachment of Novatech's um, uh, report. And what they recommend is page 152 to 161. Yeah. And that is what was approved in 2013, including the five meter firm. There's two separate ones. The counties has Super proposed easy. some changes and those are shown in, the counties in the Afghan have proposed some changes that's shown in page 162 to page. So if we approve the recommendation, we're basically approving the draft that was dated March 2013. Yes. Right. Without any changes. Yeah. No. Right? Okay, if that's what we're doing, then I have no problem. We are, but we're adding what well, we are. We're adding the okay of 93, 94, 95 and access. Yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two, 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 two additional ones and, and whatever two, the original, and additional whatever conditions. the additional conditions were. Yeah, correct. I can go with that. I like that. We still need curbs and gutters. So that, if I, no, I mean, I mean if it's, your, it, it, it's quite clear that as part of the uh, a detailed design, that, uh, that, that the requirement uh, will, will be curbs and gutters. Okay. Um, Mr. Modler first. Uh, That's a firm with the uh, one, it includes one, a five meter. Okay, great. Moved. Seconded. Further discussion. One once, one once, one twice. Good. All in favor? Aye. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's, it's one or the other. <laughs> okay. So the government, yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. 
Oh, we'll see that again, I am sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Sure. That's okay. It'll be back again. Uh, I'm sure. Now, on to again, 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 again. On to some much easier discussion, I think. Yeah. Wendy, uh, uh, 6B. 6B1. Let me find the page. <laughs> it's a call. There's a winner of the board. I gave up. <laughs> Well, Mr. Chair, just drawing your attention to page yes. 209. Okay. And page 211. I think that's where you get the report from the province of affordable housing. On 209? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 211? 211 is where I get it. <laughs> that's part of rental. Then there's another one for. Yeah, 209. Yeah, and yeah, 210. Yeah, and oh. 211. Yeah. Yeah. You got it? I got it. Okay. I got it. Good. Okay. Wendy, if you would give us a, a, a go on uh, the CIP for 29 minutes. Certainly, sure. Um, we have an application for a uh, community improvement plan funding under the property and facade uh, program. This is for uh, 29 minutes Street our Centerville Pharmacy. Um, they were the recipient of um, property and facade uh, funds earlier this year, and they've got some additional work to do this time with um, some exterior and storefront lighting. Um, they've shared some photos of the lighting that will be approved. It is um, all considered an eligible project under the um, community improvement plan. Um, they have you're, you're not allowed more than five thousand dollars under the facade and property improvement program. They have used, um, sorry, I wrote the. Uh, they've already received uh, one thousand four hundred and sixty-six dollars and forty-four cents. So um, they still have some funds remaining. Staff recommendation is that we approve it for fifty percent of the actual cost, up to a maximum of the remaining three thousand five hundred and thirty-three dollars and fifty cents. Discussion. I'll move. I'll second. Seconded. Um, further discussion? None. Uh, all in favor? Aye. And great to see the investment that uh, looks good. Uh, Evan and his family are putting into the old RBC, or shall we call it the uh, PharmaSave uh, pharmacy, and it's a great addition to Spencer also. This is this is great, great value for CIP. Um, and so item C, uh, number one, which is the wayfinding signs for uh, Johnstown. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Um. So there's been some discussion at the committee um, in the past few months about wayfinding signage in Johnstown. Um, and we have some mock-ups here from Gordon Signs, which I think meets the needs of wayfinding signage in, in Johnstown. Okay. So what's that I think they look great, wayfinding signs. Um, this is an actual sign, though, right? Right there. Oh. Oh, are they? Can, I can't. Very last page. No, I. No, the the the, 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 the arrows will, will be pointed in the. In the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to say. That's not, that's not, that's that's not, that's that's couldn't let it go. It's, it is safe to to assume that they will remain consistent with the very ones nice that well done already been installed yeah. though well we have two or just one with both sides and the other ones on Sophia Street will be uh on the number two in Sophia Street with their like both there, 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 sides there, there, there will be one one sign both sides though right correct yeah. and and the same with with the arrows so, pointing right right both the same with Sutton Drive. So we'll be consistent with uh, with those in, in, in Spencer Island. The coloring and everything, like they'll be the same as what? Because Cardinal ones are, am I wrong in thinking that they're all white with blue writing? 
No, the same style. No, they're the same style. They are blue with it's, it, it's just the it's just the, the, the some large some signs are tailored to a white oh, that structure. structure. Oh, okay. But okay. The, the, uh, the lettering and labeling in the background is all the same. It's all consistent. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bob. The one for Safari Street. Do we know if it's going to be on the south side or the north side of Highway 2? Uh, at, uh, through, through the chair at this stage, not sure. We, we, we have to we have to coordinate with the county. Okay, because it, it could make just for visibility, it could make a difference on which side. Um, if you're looking for suggestions, push for the south, so that when people are coming driving towards the east, I think they're going to get better view. Yeah. Going around that curve, they're going to be looking at it. No, they're actually the view it on the straightaway. Yeah, when you're coming right through Johnstown, you will see it if you're yeah, long. Yeah. So, I think. But other than that, um, I think it's a. They look great, and um, being selfish, I want to thank you for listening to the concerns of of, of the residents of Johnstown for this, and I think it's going to um, help us to get. Uh, Helping people find the community, all the ball lines and the pool. So, uh, thank you for that, That's good. Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm really glad to see this coming forward, and uh, I'm glad we're going to do it. Uh, and I hate to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I would like to ask for one additional sign. Since when these are being made, if we just have one more made to go on County Road 22 when you're coming south from the 401 that would point to the ingredient center. Still get lots of people asking for that yes. a sign on County Road 22. So County Road 22 southbound. Um, yes. I wonder if it seen where you are doing this on the, on the Safari Street. I kind of, I wonder if we shouldn't have Two signs, one on the north side, one on the south side. Uh, through, through the chair. Uh, uh, this is roughly what I had budgeted for. And what's two, what, 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 what's two signs? But would it be that much costly? All, all I'm thinking of, like what Greg said, like if you if we have them on both sides, it's going to be difficult. Like if, if it's on the north side, they're on the south side, going up Safari Street. It should be when you're heading uh, east. And then it should be on the north side if you're heading west. So through, through, through the chair, if, you, if, 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 it, if it was a, a municipal road, that, that would be one thing. It's very unlikely okay. that the county is going to permit uh, you know, two Both additional sides. On both sides. I just I have just, a hard time. Well, I see them. I was just waiting to make sure you were done. No, I'm done. Council Hunter first. Okay. I think sign your good idea. The only problem I have with it seems to be that we seem to be going with the quotes from one sign company all the time here. We get quotes from other. Sign companies, it seems to be always the same one here that we're getting. At least he's in our township. From. So through 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 the chair for, for this for this particular one just for these two additional uh, signs we did not we just we, we kept with the same supplier because well simply for consistency and and, and knowing exactly what uh, what the other products were that's all that, that's all we did for this particular Mr. Martin just um, for a point of clarity. For it right now, there are currently two signs on Highway Two for Sophia Street. So if you come east, you see it, and if you come west, so we could, if we could sell it, that these would replace the two existing signs. So we're not adding any. No, I think I, I think there's a chair to be clear. The 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 green signs yeah. that the county has will they will remain. Well, they will. Okay. Yeah, so you, you know, what you're going to have is three signs. Okay. Instead of the I, I, I find it unlikely that they will remove their, their okay. signs. 
They're fun. Yeah, I think they look fantastic. Oh, they yes, look fantastic. It's long so, overdue, and it's great. nice to see Thank them getting done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Out of the way, cut the ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> Ab, ab, after the highway, uh, highway 22. Uh, I just want to thank staff on, on these. They look fantastic. Can't wait to see them get up. So uh, there's no, no recommendation or anything there. They're just getting done. Uh, let's move on to seven then, which is inquiries and notices of motion. Inquiries and notices of motion. I guess I've got one motion that I'm going to bring forward to, to the administration and finance. About the uh, funding for the uh, committee. Yep. So we'll see. Committee. We'll see that at the amendment finance meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. I don't have an inquiry. No, the motion. I was just to make a comment on didn't get to make there earlier uh, on our community development app application for PharmaSave. I just like to go on record with the people in Spencerville here. I've had about five different people comment to me on how wonderful it is that these people are here. Uh, I'll make one comment and one personal thing. Uh, my brother-in-law just recently lost his wife. And unfortunately he was in a state that, and family didn't realize he was out of his pills. He got and drove all the way from, down from Brockville at 6 30 or 70 o'clock at night and opened the pharmacy up, prepared all his pills for the month and, and waited for them to pick them up. I don't know what other drugstore in the country that would get, do that. So I have seen people are the greatest, and they're not the only ones. I've heard a couple others that they could back come on these that are closed to supply pills to them. So, like, what a wonderful cup company and people to move into our community and operate a, a store like this. This is old time yep. business people. It's yeah. old service. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great to see. Just a question. Could I ask a question of Councillor Hunter? Uh, you mentioned they came from Brockville. Do these people also own the pharmacy on King Street in Brockville? No. Okay. They have partners in Brockville. Okay, thank you. Because uh, that the pharmacy in Brockville is Quite accommodating. Good. Uh, so, any further inquiries and notice of motion? No? Good. All right. So, question period. Nobody here to ask questions. Uh, no closed session. And I need somebody to move and second adjournment. Moved. Seconded. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right.